Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to another Finance Friday call. <laughs> it's an amazing day to be alive. And we have a very, very special guest tonight with us, our brother Brent Vogt. He is from Florida. He's a family man. He's a believer. He's a serious entrepreneur. And this man is just doing incredible things right now uh, with his uh, financial license, helping a lot of people get their money mindset right as well as with his uh, mindful events company where they are hosting events throughout uh, not only Florida, but the East Coast and expanding massively. So uh, Brent, are you with us? Yes, sir. Amazing, amazing. Well, Brent, I'm super excited to have you here with us tonight. And we have about four to five questions. We're gonna dive into how you think and you know the success that you've been able to accomplish for yourself and also help a lot of other people accomplish. And, uh, so before we do that, I would love to pass the mic to you and maybe you can tell everyone that's here with us tonight and also uh, everyone else that will be watching this recording a little bit more about yourself from your seat. You know, tell, tell us a little bit of who you are, a little bit of your upbringing and what you're doing right now. And then we're, we're going to dive into some some questions. Well, first, that, uh, first of all, thank you. And Nick, can you guys hear me? OK. Yes, sir. Perfect. Thank, thank you, Nick and Mike, for hosting such an amazing uh weekly event and I'm honored to be on the call and uh, I hope that uh, everybody who leaves here this evening at least walks out with some shift some transformation that they can uh, remember back to this call and God willing in the future I, I get to meet you and you can remember a nugget here that hey I remember what you said there and then there was a little shift and I implemented something that you said I'm born and raised in Miami Florida my mom was born in Cuba she came here when she was six knew no English um, ended up getting married my dad uh, who was uh, from Miami but of German Irish descent so I grew up two languages and um, I, I got to see a lot of uh, uh, different perspectives around that uh, just because I, I grew up in a Cuban commu community looking more American and then I went to college and I was more Hispanic than all the Americans there so I've seen a lot of uh, uh, I got to just see two, two different worlds so I was kind of cool to grow up like that I grew up playing sports um, I, I, you know, was baptized. I always believed in God. Thank God and my grandmother and, and my mother for always, uh, you know, I wasn't a church going person just because that's just how my family grew up, but they always instilled, uh, you know, uh, believing in Christ. And, and um, so I always had that foundation, but I didn't really start following it uh, to about maybe uh, it was in my mid thirties. Um, but that was always at the core. And it's been amazing to kind of explore that even further uh, these days. I grew up playing sports, like I said, and, and when I remember when I was younger, uh, for some reason, I call it a download. I had a download. And I said, well, if I'm going to work, might as well love what I do. And shortly after that, I remember uh, watching, I was in the kitchen of my house and I saw some NBA player. Now this was in the 80s. So imagine my TV had some tinfoil on it. And I remember some NBA player getting some crazy contract for millions of dollars. So after playing baseball and football and uh, 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 skateboarding my entire life, I said, you know what? I love basketball. You can make millions doing it. Got to love what you do. I, so I chose in that moment to be a basketball player. I was about 5'8", 135 pounds. So I had some work to do. So I played a bunch of ball. I ended up excelling in that and had an opportunity to play at, at a small school uh, or get into a larger school for college. So I made that choice. So I went to college. And then I, I was very, I was sad that I made that decision. So there was some regret there. And there's a lesson there because you may have made a decision where there was some regret, but there's always a reason for that decision, you know? So in the moment you may feel that void, but there's always a lesson or something else to look for. So I began uh, with that mantra, well, what can I do uh, that I'm going to love that I'm going to have fun with? And I, and I had always uh, loved music. I was a music collector. I had learned how to play the sax and, uh, middle school and then I decided to be a DJ so um, so this was around the mid 90s and I just I went all in and I just started practicing practices and so I actually practiced so much made way, my way through college graduated and just said I wanted to be an entrepreneur and I and I and I continued my DJ uh, music world in um, in uh, South Florida uh, they had a record label DJ with a bunch of artists and then uh, that ran its course I started having a family I, you know, I've been 10 years working really hard in that industry and I was working six nights a week. And if you guys have ever learned about the cash flow quadrant uh, by Kiyosaki, I was in the lower left-hand column. So I was a self-employed individual. That means I was working six nights a week, but if I didn't work, 
I didn't get paid. And I, uh, I had already had a college degree. I got a business degree and I really only went to college just to be the first one to graduate, kind of get it done. We were talking the other night. I didn't, I chose like four or five majors and I was really just hurting throughout the process because I didn't know what I wanted and it seemed like everybody else did. All I just remember is, uh, you know, roommates and friends and I want to be an accountant. I want to be a CPA. I want to be a doctor. I mean, my career path was not on the menu that they fed me. And because the, my career path was not on the menu that they were feeding me, and I thought that I had to be that person, I felt a void. And then something hit me, and I remember there was just one of those other moments. I said, hold on, it's, not, it's okay not to figure out what I want in this moment, but why don't I just start crossing out what I don't want? I try this, it's not for me, change the major, not for me, change the major. And then by the time I said, you know what, I got a few classes left to finish a marketing degree, I graduated, that was it. And then um, to sum things up, as I was uh, in my DJ career, I started getting my licenses in financial services as a backup plan. You always hear having multiple streams of income. I looked at it as a back tire, a spare tire in my car, but a spare tire in my career. So I started getting my licenses in the financial services industry as a backup plan. And so I started, as I was working six nights a week in the music world, um, and that started to fade away. I started getting sick and tired of music. I was sick, sick working six nights a week. My wife was like, listen, you know, if you want to have a family, you got to make some changes. All my friends that used to go out and hang, they were no longer there anymore. So I said, you know what, let me check out this financial thing. I have all my licenses. I've been practicing and learning it for a while. Uh, everybody I knew that was working was very successful. So literally I started uh, dissolving my music. You know, I didn't quit right away. I started dissolving it as I started working uh, the financial world. And simultaneously, I was selling records on on eBay, you guys were talking earlier about Amazon. So I was a big time eBay seller, all my extra vinyl and CDs. I was, I was doing whatever I could, you know? And um, my final job uh, was I were, was working at Chase back in the days. And the only reason I got the job at Chase is because I wanted to buy a house. And I remember um, being a college graduate, all these licenses, a DJ career, and uh, that, that was about to, 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 to really explode in Miami. And I remember some young, guys have the biggest smiles on their face biggest smiles on their face they would they would come into the bank uh, and they would just deposit checks all day long and then leave and then come back and I go what do you guys do and they were they only spoke in Spanish and they go we we buy and sell perfume and they would and I was, they were buying and selling perfume making more money than me and I said you know what I'm done and I made one of the um, craziest decisions I quit the bank and then told my wife afterwards so um and then like, and then this is, I'm telling you some stories because, you know, there's, we're all going to deal with adversity. So when I, when I quit the bank, I said, I'm going to take this DJ career on and I'm kind of going back and forth. Obviously I can try to be as linear as possible, but moments come back that are great lessons. And I was said, I'm going to, I'm going to go be an internet guy. This was in the, this was probably in 2002, 2003. I'm going to be an internet guy. I'm going to, I visualize a laptop on the beach. I'm going to sell records. So I remember listing all of these records and CDs, and I'm talking about real vinyl records and CDs on eBay, and I, we were going on a beach vacation, and I had just quit my job, and my wife's like, listen, she was not happy I told her afterwards, so that's another lesson. Tell your wife before, your spouse, that you're going to do something. But um, so I, 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 she, you know, so I said, but just make it happen. So I just, I just started listing records and listing records and listing records because I was waiting for my DJ career to pop off, and then I listed probably a hundred pieces of, of uh, online and they take, they took about a week to sell. And I remember being on the beach and um, while I was on the beach, after I listed all these records, I, you know, I figured when I got back home from vacation, man, all of these records would have been sold. And um, you know, I made my money. So I remember one day on the beach, I go upstairs to check all my listings that I was selling online and they were all taken off. So I literally quit my job, did all these listings, and eBay had yanked them down because one of my listings was a promotional record. So here I am, the entrepreneur, married, a mortgage. I'm about, you know, this is easy stuff, and I get jacked in the face. So, you know, there, so there was a blessing there. One of my favorite uh, quotes is from uh, Napoleon Hill. Every adversity, every heartache, every fa failure carries within it the seed of an equivalent or greater benefit. Another one of my uh, favorite quotes is, uh, wisdom is the instantaneous recognition that a crisis is a blessing. And that's from John D. Martini. A breakdown leads to a, a breakthrough. A setback, leads, uh, you know, a, setup, a, set, a setback leads to a setup to a comeback. So I've developed all of these things. And so when a crap does happen, I already have these brain patterns that I'm going to move forward. So bottom line, 
uh, finished DJ career. I started taking off in, in the financial business. And once again, my first year in the financial business was in 2008. So if some of y'all remember, most people were running away out of the financial world. I was running in the financial world in 2008 because that's when I was completely done with music. So who runs into the financial world when everything is collapsing? Thankfully, I knew the fundamentals and I actually was very profitable my first year full time in, in the financial world. So fast forward, we're in another crisis and at all I am seeing is opportunity right now. Like my mind is already so programmed to, it's like that sprinkler, you know, you see that sprinkler? Those sprinklers go like we can waver to get distracted with. I mean, just Facebook the last couple of days, and I mean, just everything is going off the charts. But I'm back to my source, back to my thinking, back to like a crisis is, is a blessing, and I get to program my brain and look for that. So what I do right now for a living, just to sum things up, is um, I help people with their finances. You know, we go to school, you know, get good grades, get a good job, get a career, figure out money, go to work, go to work, go to work, go to work, try to manage your money, and then die right? So I didn't want to live that. So what I do is we don't learn about money in school. So I basically work with middle class families. Uh, I help them uh, understand money, both logically, psychologically, help them create good habits. Um, you know, we have husbands and wives and, you know, our, I tend to work with a lot of couples. Um, I'm, I'm excited about this group. There's a lot of young individuals that could catch these, uh, these concepts early on because, uh, you know, going into a, 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 a marriage or a, a relationship with two different money consciousness, consciousness, right, there's always going to be conflict, you know. So for the first time when I sit down with somebody and, and, and couples, they get to look at me and not look at each other around their finances because there's no right or wrong. They just both came up with different programming. So we got to create now in two different worlds. So I try to create one world, mitigate that. So when I'm in front of people financially, it's not really about money. It's really what does money do to people? You know, it causes divorce rate. It causes multiple parents working and not seeing their kids and their kids in daycare. Money causes stress. Stress causes illnesses, you know? So, so it's, it's bigger, you know? So my goal is to get the message out there, not only on, on the money side of things, but really uh, the, you know, I'm so thankful to, to, to have, have taken class after class was done on the personal development world, which was reading books, being on amazing podcasts like that. So I just tried to take 15 years in about 15 minutes or so so amazing no no thank you thank you brand I, I, unbelievable value there already that i'm taking from that you know i, I think it, at the very beginning you were mentioning about the decisions right and how uh, we a lot of times regret them but they really played a role at the time for who you are now and there's actually a a, a phrase that one of my mentors told me as well that that's in alignment with that he's you know i asked him one time um, how do I know between two options if they both seem pretty good? How do I know which one I need to take? And wow. he, said to me, he said to me, uh, what if there was no right or wrong option? What if there was just a choice? And the moment you made the choice, it became the right one. And wow. that rocked my world, right? Because of that right. thinking right there. And so thank you for giving us a little synopsis of, you know, a big picture view of, of your experience. And one of the things that, that stood out for me as well was the, uh, the preparing mentality, right? You were saying you got you get back to your source, um, especially like you said with everything going on. If we are not thinking for ourselves, we are just responding to everything that's happening around us, and I think that's huge. So, my first question to you, Brent, I want to dive in a little deeper on something that we spoke about yesterday, right? So, let's talk a little bit more about our our money story, right? The story that we have in our own minds about money. Can you can we dive in a little bit more for the next three to five minutes, and that, and then we're gonna pass it to Mike. Yes. Um, so, we have sixty thousand to eighty thousand thoughts every single day. I uh, would check out Dr. Joe Dispenza on that. Um, and. 90% of these thoughts, and this is all because of brain scan, these 60 to 80,000 thoughts, 90% are negative and 90% are a repeat of yesterday, okay? So, and those thoughts come in, 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 in and they're really words and visions and pictures. And, and, and so if, if we're trying to program a future and we're, and, 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 and we're constantly programming a future, yet we're battling these 60 to 80,000 80, thoughts, just in this call alone, Everybody will have two to 3,000 thoughts. Luckily, you're hearing some positive words that'll displace and some education. So, so those words and pictures are really um, our story and they're repetitive. For example, I grew up, uh, my parents, my mom passed away with credit card debt and these creditors were hounding my dad. And, um, you know, my grandparents, I saw them because of me getting into the financial industry and I saw them have, you know, go bankrupt because they were old. So I grew up 
watching this and not know, or knowing that. And, and I grew up credit card rich. As a matter of fact, I would hear my mom always say, put it on the card, put it on the card, put it on the card. I remember one day we were in the mall and Birdines was over there and the jeans that I wanted were over there. And they were the same price as the jeans at JCPenney over there. And I didn't get why my mom didn't take me to bird eyes right now you know mind you i got a first world freaking problem right but, but i went to jc penny and and to get you know jeans i didn't want because that's where my mom had a credit card so so the first day on campus of college and i got there was you know sign up for a free teacher to towel whatever and get a credit card so i just started inheriting those traits because i had never identified my money story so one of the i'm going to give you two tools to start to identify your money story first you got to be able to observe like i was able to catch that my i heard my mom saying put it on the card and i i would have so one of so one, how did i do that is asking myself a question you know if you've listened to tony robbins it says the quality of your life leads to the comes from the quality of the questions you ask yourself you know in sales we get trained to ask people questions but we don't take the time to ask ourselves the question you could be as simple as when was the first time i got into debt and then an image comes up and start going from there. Well, what did I do? Why did I do that? Or when was the first time that I didn't pay a debt? Or when was the first time that I heard my parents get into credit card debt? Or what was the first time that I heard of my parents argue about money? Right? So you, there's a lot of introspection. You know, trauma is a big deal. It's something I've been studying for, for recently, more so than ever. And a trauma could be something very horrific, like, you know, you know things I don't even want to discuss. Um, to to you tripped and fall in the in, in the lunchroom and somebody made fun of you, you know? So trauma, it doesn't make a difference. It creates part of the story. And if you don't start looking at past moments and peeling back the onion, the same thing will begin to repeat themselves because you, you, you have to be able to see it, observe it. And once you see it and observe it, then you're able to create a new canvas. Does that make sense? So, so identification of the story is the first way to recreate the story. That's wow, beautiful. that is huge. Um, I'm taking notes, people. Ninety percent. If you're not writing it down, it's going to go out the door, right? Uh, we have a great guest. Um, I'm getting so much value and the knowledge. It's so fun to to have speakers like you who fire from the hip because in your introduction you started just answering all my questions, and I'm over <laughs> here like, whoa, wait, wait, wait a minute, wait a minute, I got questions. Thank you, man. Um, but that's awesome, man. I, I, I appreciate the way that you just take a hold of the situation. It's um, from what I've seen in my life, it's one of the biggest signs of people who can take control of their lives, right? If you can take control of the situation in a lot of different situations, it, it primes you to take control over your own life and the direction that it's going. Um, I got a question for you, man. You're, you're clearly, you got the success, you got the posture, you got the speaking. Um, what was the turning point in your career, right? We heard a little bit about your story and some of the different things that you were going through. I, I feel like I'm noticing this trend where people start to see success and then something happens, right? Almost the same way that a race car hits NOS, right? People start to experience a little bit success and then they turn it on, right? And there's a switch goes off in their mind. They start to view money differently. They start to get involved in different investments. And they go from that, we're, we're even to like, now we're way up, right? What was that turning point for you in your own life and your own experience where you had that shift of, all right, now we're making good money to like, now my wife is, is good to leave and, and, and the house is good and the kids are good and we are good. What, what was that shift for you? Thank you. Um, so there's a couple. So when I transitioned, um, and they're both important because they, they, they're all uh, modalities or things that can be integrated. And, and I wanna share the, all of them because some may land on different people differently. The first one was when I was shifting out of the music world and going to financial world. So some of you guys may be thinking of, of changing careers and I was not passionate about the financial world. So you know, I, I listened to a call recently with Aubrey Marcus and, um, Seth Godin, and he and he says too many people wait you know wait for something passionate to hit them then to work. He goes no, go to work and let the passion become you. You know, so some of you guys may have something in front of you, but you're not attacking because you're waiting for the passion. Good luck with that. So um, 
you know, desperation hit me. You know, I was, I was walking away from an industry. I was making over six figures on my tax return in the mid 2000s for just music alone. So walking into something where I had, you know, very little experience, uh, I had to get moving. So fear was a big moving point. And along with that, though, when I stepped into the financial world, I forgot what happened, but they said, you got to read books. And I had never read anything that I wasn't assigned in my life. So I had heard about uh, uh, Paolo Coelho's um, The Alchemist. So pretty much three, three distinct moments. So the, the, the thing that opened me up was that book, The Alchemist, The Secret, the movie, because I watched the movie and the audio at the same time. I was watching the, uh, uh, the, the, the video of The Secret and the movie. And then I started studying everybody in the book. Right. So I was the book was the video was I started identifying myself, learning all the individual works. And then what the bleep do we know, what, no, which was around uh, uh, um, uh, quantum physics. That was around 05, 06. And then 07, you know, I, I basically, you know, uh, accepted Christ and I started reading the Bible. So that combination of like going from the material grinded out world to like, oh, my God, I can begin to use my mind. I can displace my old thinking with new thinking, like those 60,000, 80,000 thoughts. Because imagine, you, I had hip-hop in my, in my head, lyrics, like, you know, Biggie Smalls, ready to die, right? Like, what an affirmation was that? You know, like, so there was just, you know, it was great. It was wonderful. But, you know, it was just, it was in my mind, and it was repetitive. So I had to displace. So that was one major one. And then 2009, when I found out I was having my daughter, I'm married – Actually, this month, um, um, Eric Brown was on there. He knows my family pretty well. Um, we just celebrated 25 years together. I have a 10-year-old and a 3-year-old. She just turned 10 and uh, 18 years married. And we were having our first baby, uh, 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 baby. And I remember reading a book by John Asaroff, who I found in The Secret, who's known for his uh, vision boards. About uh, I read his book. Um, um, well, I'm drawing a blank. Is it up here? Um, the uh, the answer. It was the answer. And in that book, I learned all about meditation. So when I started learning how to meditate, and by the way, meditation, the definition uh, is to become familiar with. That's another topic. So let's become familiar with those 80,000 thoughts. I began to be able to visualize and see what was going on in my brain and then feel good about what I was doing in my life versus grinding against those thoughts every single day. I was actually flowing with newer thoughts. So those are like really the things that, 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 that kind of took place. Because I had always worked, but one way is to work, you know, going down the river with it or up against it. So those are, those are the, the two things that shifts happen. Like once I read those books and started seeing meditation, I just couldn't. I literally stopped the music, you know, and I just started devouring every book Every, I mean, I just, I was on YouTube before, like I was introducing YouTube, I felt like to people back in the days. So yeah, I just started devaluing personal development, man. That's incredible. Yeah, I, I, I'm finding a lot of uh, similarities also in my beginning, you know, journey as well. Uh, I'm 26, you know, so I'm a little bit behind experience wise, but I, I can relate a lot. With that. You started earlier than me, brother. I wish, you know, you know, could have, would have, should have, but everybody's on their own uh, journey. So that's right. Amen. Yeah. And, and I would love to dive in a little bit on one of the things that you mentioned tonight, uh, or you just mentioned, which was when you found Christ, right? This call is not geared towards our um, spiritual call, right? That we do that on Sundays. However, I want to uh, just ask you, um, you know, because it sounds like you made a huge shift from the grinding phase, like you were saying, and obviously you still have that, that entrepreneurial spirit in you and you're working actively. Uh, you're in the trenches. However, you became more of a spiritual person working, right? You weren't just in the world. So can you, can you tell us a little bit about that? Because I think uh, all of us have that in common. We have huge goals. We're working towards them actively, uh, but we're all also eager to build our spiritual life and not just be in the world. Do you mind sharing a little bit of how the two can go together? Yes. Funny enough, I was at a business meeting where it was optional worship an hour before. So I had gone with my wife and I was already feeling the nudge and, you know, I had always prayed and, but I didn't have any community around it or I didn't have any plan. So I was, uh, I went to the optional worship and it was, it was a very simple moment. I was, it was in a theater style and um, they, 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 they were, um, you know, there was a somewhat of a service and um, you know, the, the gentleman leaving the service basically said, you know, 
uh, if anybody wants to, uh, my eyes were closed, and, and if anybody wants to come up and accept the Bible and accept Jesus Christ, uh, just feel free to come up. And I remember being fear, like, like I didn't want to get up, my eyes were closed, and I kind of, uh, you know, but I've been looking, and then my, I asked my wife, like, what do you think? And she goes, you know, she had been raised Catholic, I was not, um, and she's like, just yeah, you've, you've been just I remember exactly the words but you've been wanting to do something you've been asking this is the, this is the moment so I literally walked up and you know I remember hugging uh, his name was Guy Shishadi he gave me my first bible and and I remember this just like weight you know coming off me uh and it felt so good and there were just tears and 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 uh you know there was just the beginning um actually um uh so, so I'm actually getting mentored by my pastor once a week now, uh, so many times, even today, you know, I had a very successful day in business today and, and it was like do or die. And it was like some things that I wanted to land. And I remember saying, listen, God, if this is not for me, then, then it's okay. Cause it was, there was a big commission involved, what I was going on with, and if it's not for me, that's okay. I'm sure something else will show up. And I, and, and, and we were talking about rest. So literally I was up early and then I was supposed to go to work and I said, you know what? I'm tired. And I didn't know how I was going to handle the approach. So I literally went back to my bed today around nine and, I, and, and, and my wife kind of knew. And I just was going to go meditate, pray, and then work it out. So I was literally praying in and out of a sleep and, and just kind of working out like how I was going to approach this deal. And, and I finally like, it was like, and I was just praying, working out the deal. I got up and four or five things happened that were not even on my list. And it's almost like, God, thank you, because I guess you wanted me to do this. So, you know, with the 60, 80,000 thoughts, that's 60 to 80,000, you know, like there's a squirrel, there's a squirrel, there's a squirrel, there's a squirrel, right? There's got to be some sort of source, right? Like that splinker, that sprinkler. So I think of that sprinkler. I always want to come back to the source as many moments throughout the day as possible. Praying can, you know, it's not in morning and evening as often as you can. So, yes. Wow. <laughs> Love it. That is beautiful. Um, you know, I know in, in my own walk, you know, I, I'm learning to only speak for me. Um, in my own walk, that ability to be present and, and, and your, your meditation. I'm so interested in that conversation and, and your ability to plug in. Um, one thing that I've noticed at 28 going on 29 is, especially with my faith, like I get to lean on it in the hard times when like, I don't know how to make a way. Right. And then all of a sudden a way is made, right. If it's meant to be like a way every single time I've been up in the air, a path has presented itself. And if the path didn't present itself, I was forced to go another way. And over here was everything that I didn't even know. Of. Um, and it's this crazy, beautiful um, dance that we have with the source. Um, it's amazing. It's a dance. Dance it is. Yeah, that's beautiful. I appreciate you sharing that story. Um, I would like to before, tap in. Before we continue, um, as I think of some books or authors, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to write them down here. Um, just because my current book that I'm reading, um, Celebration. Excuse my handwriting. You know what? Let me do this uh, real quick. Sorry for the interruption. You're all good, brother. Celebration of Discipline by Foster. I had this book on my desk for five years. And then um, recently, Ben, Green, uh, ben Greenfield, uh, the super trainer, read it. And uh, this is blowing my mind. It's helped me have a great year amidst uh, all the craziness. So, um, and it's really helpful with the morning routine. It talks about Christian meditation. It's yeah. pretty cool. Go it's ahead. awesome. And you know what's beautiful about your interruption is it's exactly in congruency with what my question was, which is what are, let's say the top three, like you're, you're disciplined, man. You start your morning, you win the morning, you win the day. I can feel it in your, in your entire existence that you have habits in the morning. Well, what would you say are your top three habits that you think are directly correlating to your success in life? and your ability to tack on um, the things that you go through on a daily basis? What are those, you know, top things that like, yo, we got to get this done in the morning before I even approach another human being? Uh, perfect. Thank you for asking. Um, so I'll just kind of run through my routine real quick. And, you know, so 
and, and I, I wish I did this every single day. I try and do something every, I do something every single morning, something where I breathe. So, so, so I'll just walk you through it. I wake up and uh, I use the restroom and this is an ideal day. It doesn't have it perfect. I have daughters that are jumping in my bed. Sometimes I got to grab my, my daughter so my wife can sleep in a little bit more. You know, I miss the alarm clock or whatever. Something happens, you know. First thing, I don't turn on my phone until I feel like it. That's number one. It's on airplane mode until I don't go until like I don't put my phone on at least until an hour usually. So the most important thing that I've learned is to have a sanctuary or a sacred space, a place that you could get up, use the bathroom, and go. And I have two go places in my garage. I have a a place where I you know it's a it's a it's a meditation mat you know or just a mat where I can sit back comfortable and I don't have to I don't want to think I don't want to start thinking. So how quickly can I get up and not think? Right? I want to get up and do nothing, not get up and do something. I got, there was a quote, I can't, I, 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 I can't find a way to find the person who says, if you can't do nothing right, how can you do anything right? So I want to get up and go do nothing. And what I mean by nothing is I just go and breathe, okay? And, I, and I'm back and forth now between the Wim Hof method of breath work, which is kind of similar to Tony Robbins, what I've, you know, I've seen him do is, um, or I'll just go into a meditation using some uh, sophageal scale frequency. I go, I kind of go to the uh, 520 hertz, 28 hertz, and I put in headphones, and um, and and I and I make sure that that I don't have any uh, interference, uh, cellular interference. So I don't want any cellular interference uh, interfering, you know, those waves interfering the waves that I do want. In an ideal morning, I'll sit there for about 40 minutes, and I've got 120, and and um and I'm more committed to that since listening to Joe Dispenza. And what happens is I, I allow those thoughts to dissipate, you know, because what happens is they're running so quickly. And then the more I meditate, they slow down, they slow down. And then you can reach what's called a meditative state, which there is no thought. Um, and truthfully, what happens is I, I use the meditation as a tool to have a connection with, with God. And and because if I could get those thoughts out of the way that I can ask him questions, he, he can ask me questions. So much so I've had a couple, I've had encounters which you know i i know that it was the holy spirit and i wasn't even trying to pray it's almost he came to me he was in my in my third eye in my mind and it was it was undeniable one of the most beautiful feelings i had and it took a lot of practice but i've had that moment four or five times and it, it was almost like christ was revealed to me it's difficult to explain i'm very confident in sharing with this um but um it doesn't happen all the time and then and then after that, I'll, I'll just kind of just visualize and I'll see the, uh, you know, the, and sometimes I honestly see visions, like the craziest of nasty things in my mind, like pictures and visions. And I just let them go. Like if I was on, 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 if I was on, on the floor looking up at clouds and I couldn't move my neck, but I had to look straight up, I know these clouds are going to pass by. So I know these visions are going to come back. And if I just keep less letting them pass by, then I know eventually They'll just slow down. And then it's almost like the 60,000 thoughts I've removed. I have a blank canvas now to write whatever future I want, if that makes sense. How are you going to write a future? Like imagine right over here, there was like scribble scrabble all over the place. And I want to write my goals on top of scribble scrabble. It's impossible. It's like writing your goals on top of 60, 80,000 thoughts. Impossible. So I let them go out of the way. I pray. I have a conversation with God. He'll talk to me. I'll talk to him. And I'll, you know, I'll get different, different downloads from him. Like the other day he told me, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Was what I was like, what are you telling me? Thank me. What is this? It was crazy. So I never know what to expect. And then I visualize what I want my day to look like. You know, I, I learned from Jim Rome, uh, begin your day after it's already done. So I try to finish my day after it's, you know, in my mind before it actually begins. And then I need to do some sort of movement. And the movement can be a run, go jump in, 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 in the cold ice pool um, or, or, or play basketball, go to the sauna, do jumping jacks. And I love to put my bare feet on the ground to have a connection with the earth. That's another lesson. You can look up earthing or grounding. So I try to get, that's like a great day. Sometimes I got five minutes. I'm like 10 minutes. I'm in the backyard, jumping jacks, breathing. Thank you, God. Oh, visualize. And I'm into the cold shower, you know, so, but I got like today before I got on, I'm like, I got to get some breathing, some movement. I got to come here pumped up. So if I'm going to go face, so, and it's really about changing my state, right? So there's really two states, you know, a, a suffering state or a beautiful state. And it's really our nervous system. We're in our, we're in our, our fight or flight. Uh, you know, our, parasy uh, our, our sympathetic nervous system, which is, you know, which is like fight or flight, which most people live. 
or, or we're in our, our parasympathetic nervous system. You know, it's the good wolf or the bad wolf. Call it whatever. There's a million ways to define this crap. But I want to, if I'm feeling nasty and I know it, I don't want to talk to people or, or you know, I want to radiate. I want to get in a good frequency, a good vibration. And I, it's my responsibility. And then once I'm done, I do some family time, hang out with my daughters, and then I'm out to go serve or do whatever I got to do, you know? So that's, that's really what's it, you know? So, so, so med if I said three things, meditation, prayer, uh, visualize, you know, affirmation and movement, which is physiology. That is incredible. I love that. Thank you for bringing, uh, you know, uh, one of the topics that we've been getting more into, uh, me and Mike, we've been speaking about the power of solitude and uh, mm. something that it's new to me. And I understand logically the power of it, but I think that you just helped me um, connect some of the dots with the, you know, waking up and not going to your thoughts and doing everything you can to stay out of it, you know, and, and uh, being intentional about that first thing in the morning before you're in the group of things, you know, so that that's beautiful. I'm, I took a lot of value, took a lot of notes here. Uh, Brent. Uh, we, and I have more questions, but we are already a little bit over the 30 minute mark. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to stop the recording. Okay. For those of everyone that's watching the recording, thank you for joining us. And then for everyone else that's here live, we're going to give it another 10, 15 minutes where the audience can ask some, ask you some questions as well. Okay. So thank you guys for joining us, Brent. Thanks for being here. Actually, thank before you. I end the recording, do you mind telling everyone that's listening to the recording, how they can get a hold of you? Um, either saying or i can i can type it as well in our description yeah so you can find me on facebook or instagram at brant boat uh i just started a, a so brant boat and instagram message me i love having phone calls i don't charge anything to speak with people you know so um, i'm not here i'm just really here to listen and and you know develop a long-term relationship so brant boat on instagram or facebook um brantboat.com um, as well uh, we're working on this guy but you can reach to me so there, reach me through that if you'd like um, um, but that's pretty much it you know and if you got a cell phone number just ask ask these gentlemen amazing amazing thanks again for joining us and uh, thanks for the value that you've given us tonight Brent Thank God you. bless everyone stay, 